So I just got word that many of my students' music is being placed actually in American Beauty Star, which is a reality TV show uh, on the Lifetime Network. And our uh, licensing partner was kind enough to send me actually some video clips of our members' tracks actually being used. So what I wanna do in this video is actually give you guys a sort of overview um, and play you some of the video clips. I'm not gonna play them all. And I wanna show you um, walk you through essentially the story of how we were given a brief, how we were given the sort of instructions of what we were to uh, compose and what our specific guidelines were, all the way to actually seeing our tracks getting placed on these kind of TV shows and how they were actually placed in the TV show and what elements of the music that we put together actually are useful for these TV shows. The one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that when you are creating music for TV film placements, we call it production music. And it's slightly or sometimes vastly different than any other type of music that you've ever created in your life. It's not rocket science. It doesn't require you to completely relearn everything you know about music, but you do need to learn how to from the ground up, literally what instruments you use, how you stack your session to how you mix and master and deliver your final stems and alt mixes to uh, make sure that you're creating a useful and licensable music for the libraries that you partner with. And I'm gonna show you right now why our tracks got placed and why they were very useful for the music supervisor and editors who are putting together these TV shows like this, okay? So the first three that I'm gonna show you is these are all elements of music that we put together that were part of an album about creating suspense. Um, particularly for reality shows when there would be an elimination scene or just some sort of a judgment scene where some contestant on a show didn't know if they were going to make it onto the next round, right? So the emotional um, elements there are obviously suspense. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can achieve that. And we talk about that in Sync Academy, all the different ways that you can sort of include these specific motions into your, uh, your music. And it can it come in many different genres. So you can have hip hop suspense, rock suspense, orchestral sus suspense, uh, corporate pop. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. Um, but you need to make sure that you're delivering the complete emotional uh, clarity for that exact emotion. Otherwise, if you submit a track and it has some suspense, but else has this optimism and it kind of has this celebratory fun part of it, you're not going to, the library is not going to know where to classify that. It's not going to really fit anywhere specifically. So it's not a smart idea to try to be all things to all people and try to deliver all these different emotions within one track. Just zero in on the one emotion that's being asked of you and then deliver all different aspects of that one emotion. And that'll make sense to you in just a second. So let me go ahead and play this first track, um, which is during an elimination scene. If you can oh, return. Thank you, you guys. Thank Love you all. Thank you so much. Brittany, you really did a great job tonight with your model's hair. But you got wig, eye, lip. Pick two. You can't have all three. Samson. We wish that you just punched it and went more with your model's hair. The placement and the styling with the extensions, it was problematic tonight. Brittany, you're safe. You can return to the lounge. Congratulations. Okay, so as you were listening to that track, I know sometimes it's hard to hear because you have the vocalists or the, the vocalists, you have the actors there talking, but it was fairly sparse, right? And you had a couple of those percussion, right? You had these little sparse percussion hits here and there to add to the suspense, to add to the sort of uncertainty, the queasiness feeling that you have in your stomach, right? But towards the end of that track, what did you start noticing? That there was some building happening, right? The piano got a little bit more creepy it started to have a sort of uh, a dissonant like uh, minor second kind of uh, teetering back and forth um, to kind of give you that sense of like well something is about to happen we got to get on the edge of our seat here right so listen again Ailing with the extensions it was problematic tonight Brittany you're safe you can return to the lounge So again, you have this building of momentum that's happening throughout the track. That's why that track was particularly placed there because it provided the suspense, it provided the tension of not knowing if this person was going to be staying on the show and then it, it built, right? It was growing and it was creating more and more tension. So it's delivering different ranges of that one particular emotion, right? Let's go to another example here. One of you will be the winner and one of you is going to be packing your brushes and going home.
not, uh, you know, of course they got the, the advertisement that comes in there, but not like complicated, right? Listen once more. It starts off fairly sparse, not a lot happening going on, but there's a little low pulsating uh, synth that's kind of giving, again, that sort of drive to the track and getting your gut kind of going, oh God, what's gonna happen? And then the strings start to pick up a little bit and it just rises up in the intensity, right? Listen again, nothing complicated about this. This is not rocket science. One of you will be the winner. And one of you is going to be packing your brushes and going home. Right? So it's just growing. The music is singing with itself. It's, it's all becoming one cohesive unit and it's all pushing up to us towards this final climatic moment, okay? In fact, I'm pretty sure this is actually a 15 second uh, Sting version that we actually supplied to our licensing partner and that's what they used right there. But that's why you need to have the full mix, drum and bass version, um, which we're gonna get into a drum and bass track that actually got placed. You gotta have the 60, the 30, the 15, the sting, right? Whatever they actually need from you, you need to be able to deliver licensable versions of your track in all those different formats. So again, that's another thing that we really do uh, stress in Sync uh, Academy. We have one more uh, suspense uh, example. Let's go ahead and take a listen. And that was the problem. When you use extensions, you don't want to know that it's fake. So you're starting to see the formula here, right? Starts off sparse. It has that sort of uh, feeling of not sure what's gonna happen and then it grows, right? Again, not rocket science. So lastly, I'm gonna show you, this is actually a trap song. We did this, I think it was last year, maybe even the year before, one of the earlier uh, projects that we did. And what we do with our licensing partners is we always give them uh, alt mixes, right? So you have the full mix, the drum and bass version, maybe you have another version that has no leads. So believe it or not, this is a trap song that when it's in its full version, is actually a really massive, huge trap track. But the producers of this show decided to use just the drum and bass version, but you still get paid the same amount as whether or not it was the full version or the drum and bass version, okay? So it doesn't mean that you get paid less or you're valued less for your music. It's really just about how the track was placed, how long it gets placed, what the ratings of the TV show was, right? But it doesn't matter what type of the, the what, what version of your instrumental track actually gets placed. So I'll go ahead and play that for you now. We're making sure you hit the mark. Everyone's look is so impactful around the room. Okay. That I want to see that impact. All right. Thanks. Okay, let's do this. Ronaldo barely did anything because he's paying attention to so you can hear it, you know, it's got just basically these pretty aggressive pounding um, hip hop trap drums with a little bass sub underneath it. I'll play it again. The room. Okay. I want to see that impact. All right. Thanks. Okay, let's do this. Ronaldo barely did anything because he's paying attention. To so again, it has this intensity, it has this feeling of uh, determination and motivation and all that good stuff. But if for this particular scene, and this is a really important point to take note of, the reason why probably they took a lot of the leads out or they didn't want to use just the drum and bass version is because they don't want a lot of distracting higher frequency instruments interrupting and distracting from the, the actors and the contestants on the show, right? Because all human voices are basically speaking in that mid to higher register. So you don't want to have necessarily in those kind of key parts, a really aggressive high register track playing with all these instruments back there because it's going to be hard to pay attention to what's, what's happening with the actors. And in fact, as I played all of these examples, you probably notice that sometimes it's really hard to even hear the music. That's because the music is there to just enhance what the actors or the contestants or the narrator or whoever is really telling the story of the current scene, right? Music is not there to be the sort of feature or the sort of primary focus. Sometimes it is, right? There'll be times when you have a placement and it's the primary focus of it to kind of drive the scene forward. But 80% plus of the time in the TV film world, this is where you're gonna see your music getting placed. Behind people talking, sometimes even hard to hear your music, but it's there adding to the emotion. It's enhancing the motion. It's, it's subconsciously actually driving the scene forward and it's getting the viewer of this particular reality show to stay on their edge of the seat, right? Don't, don't go somewhere else. Don't watch something else because you don't know who's gonna make it onto the next round. And so that's our job as producers in this industry is we need to make sure that we're delivering useful, emotionally based music that is licensable. So that's what we teach in Sync Academy. If you are not a member, I encourage you to join us because you're not gonna learn this stuff anywhere else. This is being taught by seasoned professionals such as myself, I've been doing this for over 10 years, but we have other Sync Academy pros that are currently actively getting placements like this, actively working, and they know what works and what doesn't work. So if you're gonna be spending time at all, chasing your music career in terms of trying to turn this into a full-time job for yourself, it's a smart thing 
to not try to reinvent the wheel and think that, well, I don't need to learn from those who have succeeded. I'll just kind of blaze my own way through this industry. I wish you the best of luck doing that. The smart thing to do is get under the guidance and mentorship of people that have actually figured out what works and what doesn't work. So you're not wasting your precious and limited time that you have in your studio. So you can always click below to enroll in Sync Academy. I hope you found this useful and encouraging for your music licensing career.